Praise the Lord. When I say praise the Lord, you say hallelujah, okay? Let's wake you up a little bit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be here today? Wow. God bless all of you for coming out. Yesterday was awesome. How many of you enjoyed the service yesterday? Wow. God bless you all. You received a lot yesterday. How many of you believe you received a lot yesterday? Okay. How many of you doubt that you received something? Good. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. So today, I just wanted to do a small fellowship. I actually got a room for a hundred people. Because the last time I was in Maryland, I think I got a... Last time I came to Maryland, what happened was, the next day, I just wanted to see a few people, but a lot of people filled up the lobby. Who was here the last time I was in Maryland? Nini Ba. Oh, hey, two of you were the first set of people. I prayed for your daughter, right? And suddenly she started manifesting on the floor. The manager of the hotel came and said, what, what is happening here? What is, what is going on here? <laughs> Before you know, they made us get a small hall for like 75 people. So I was able to. You guys watched it online, right? Some people gave testimonies. You guys remember that fellowship in Maryland? Some of the ladies gave testimony. Pastor Isaac was there with me. It was like a small Holy Ghost fire thing. So this time I was thinking I would do something small, but luckily they gave us 240 seats and it's almost filled up. So we forgive them for the no AC thing, right? Since they gave us 140 extra seats. God bless you. So before I start to pray for people, I want to share a word with you guys, but let us pray. I know this, some of you, you guys already prayed earlier, right? But you, it wasn't all of you. You can rise up on your feet. I'm going to be sitting today. I'm tired. Thank you, Jesus. We're just going to sing. Ah, uh, Dr. Henry, I thought you left already. You're still here? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you're going to play that, can you play it consistently? Because I'm live now. Can you just leave it playing, please? Like, bring out the volume. Stop turning it off. Bring it out more. Thank you, Jesus. Just worship the Lord. Just tell Him thank you for your life. Thank you for bringing us back again to the Lord. In your presence. It will shine. It will shine. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Bring it louder. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Bring it louder, louder. Kakayam to the Rabosia. They can't be the bass of Pont in the Rabosia. In the Yaha Kosi can't you come to the whole? Pray in the Holy Ghost. In the level, so they are not a dog. Ega ha, sick on the ha ha ha. Iba so ha 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 ya ba. Yaba so de nega so de hega. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us back. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you are going to do in this place today. Oh, yes, Lord. I can't tell you, can't tell you. I papa ya ba 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 ba. Rokoto robo shente le ba ba shente ya ya ya. Ile tente le bo shente. Yeah, 
Ikaya Baba Son Tedosita Ide Katate Tete Yatata Yatata Ekele Basete Yatata Ide Kotova had the Kababa by Yakato no 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 Ida second or who pray he got us Yaha in the Yaha so behind the Katonia I approach him here the Kate Yakatia Ide Katonte Katia Rakata Tata Tata We worship you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We adore you. We adore you. He could have a body. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes. Ah. Inviting the presence. You're changing the atmosphere. You're changing the atmosphere. Welcome to your Baba. Make it loud. The Kata Ya Baba. Hide Kosumti Ne Baba. Hide Re 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 Thank you, Lord. Without you, we cannot do anything. We need you. We need you. You say where two or two people, two or three people are gathered together. You say you are there in the midst. We know you are here, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You shall love the Lord. He make it all. He shall love the Lord. You make it all. Yes, Lord. We love you, Father. Take over this fellowship. Take over this service. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 
I soak every one of them in the blood of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus all over this room in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost fire all over this room. Every monitoring agent, every agent of darkness, let them be so hot and uncomfortable that they cannot stay. Let them be exposed in the name of Jesus. Touch the hearts of your children. Touch their hearts, Lord. Let your spirit take over this place. Let your spirit take over this atmosphere. Let them be filled with the Holy Ghost. You will feel the chills, you will feel the tingling sensation, you will feel the atmosphere changing. Oh, yes, Lord. I 
the Kaputi to Sinti. Yes, be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> for your presence Lord that's right some of you will feel the presence so strong you will never forget that this room is hard <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. Oh, let's bring more all over the place. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Move. 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 Hey, 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 hey. Hold that, somebody, hold that. Rocco, go, 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
there is anointing, there is fire, there is peace, there is total restoration. Oh, la 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 O prosokra i krekete ale kapra i koti katu kutu pahi kati katika. Some of you have spoken in tongues that you've never spoken in before. Some of you have spoken in some new tongues. Are they part of the black attack? Ya put the kit ya come to the home ya kata. O kundi ra ba 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 ba. Uro ba 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 shini ya kada kada. O suti i ya put ya put i kit ya put i kit i kit. At ya o pri kutu pri ya dia. Oh, ya kapa liko su kuti ya baba. Ukundi ya na baba ya antikia na mwoshiete. Arokoti ya basete. Akale katu katipa la katu ya katapuri kite ya puri ya katatia. Na 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 na. Hey! Speak it on! Pray! 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 Oh yes, oh! Na 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 na. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. This is powerful. My God. My God. My God. Jesus. Jesus is here with us. He says he loves you so much. Oh yes Lord. Yes Lord. He loves you. Hey. Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-
my God, my God, how are you feeling? Refresh. It feels like you feel light. I'm awake now. I was so tired right there. That's right. Somebody in my baby tower, let her play her. Yeah. Oh yes, Lord. Holy Spirit. That's right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. You can share the video on Facebook so your friends and family can also watch. The ones that were not able to come. So they don't miss up. They can feel the presence of God. Wherever they are. Did somebody turn on the phone? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lower no, that a little bit, sweetie. No, put it lower a little bit. Okay, that's good. So today while I was in my room, when I woke up, I was meditating and I was just, you know, just telling God how yesterday was awesome and how he gave a lot of gifts because you guys received two gifts, three gifts. And then he was just speaking to me and he gave me a scripture. John chapter four. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 12, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and who would have given thee living water. He was telling me that he loves to give gifts. And then, he took me to this scripture. I kept hearing that part. If you knew the if, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is like do you know even the Holy Spirit is a gift from God? Sometimes when I'm doing my programs and I'm like open your hand, let angels drop some gifts. People are thinking it's too much. God loves to give good gifts. He never says it's too much. <laughs> I was just thinking and he was, even this American woman, Jesus was trying to tell her that if she knew who she was talking to, she would not even worry about him asking her to drink. You know, he first asked her for drink and she was wondering why him being a Jew is talking to her being a Samaritan. And he said if, he knew, if she knew the gift of God and if she knew who she was talking to, that she would be asking him for living water. The one that she will not be able to thirst anymore. She would, it would just be flowing daily. That's what you guys have now. Now, Yesterday, after everything, 12 hours, you came here. Now, look at what just happened to you. You're revived. It's like strength has entered you from nowhere. If we even say, let's pray for another 12 hours, you guys have energy for it. It's amazing. Only God can do this thing. I'm telling you, the DJ was telling me, he said he's been working with so many ministers because I just, it was Danny that got him for me, one of my workers here, that booked him for me. He used to be a promoter too, DJ that set up, he used to be a party promoter and then started DJing, but now he DJs for like weddings and churches and all that events. So when he was talking to me, he never knew what to expect. He's never heard of me, never seen me. He said yesterday he was shocked. He said what he noticed was people were not willing to leave. He said 
here in Maryland, the program that he's been to, if it's more than two hours, sometimes people are already restless, wanting to go. Sometimes, before the end of the program, the place is a little empty, like some people have left. He said, this one, when he packed his equipment and went to the parking lot, there were still a lot of people in the parking lot. So he didn't know if you guys were sleeping in your car. So people didn't want to leave. He said, it's just the presence of God. There was a point that the presence was so strong, the person that came that takes the picture. Did you guys see her? Him, the DJ too, was on the kneeling and receiving gifts. She, the camera woman, was. Nobody to take picture of that moment. He said, this is amazing that he's followed so many ministers of God. He's never ever seen this before. He's never ever been to a 12 hours program. Today he set up, I say, how much? He said, ah, don't pay me, I don't want money. I said, no, I want to pay you. He said, eh, eh, let me set up and go. He said, ah, no, I don't want to. <laughs> God, God touched him yesterday. <laughs> I said, you said, no, what is it? You think this is the way it was? Okay, he said, mm -hmm. <laughs> Because instead of walking, they were receiving. So they owe me money. <laughs> For coming to my program, and receiving Holy Ghost. <laughs> but this is how it is. For strangers to be able to even tap in. Even when we went to New York, the man, the, the pastor that was doing the sound, he was sitting, I don't know how many of you were in New York, but there was a man sitting where the sound control is. He had, he had to ask them, you see? I want to follow her on Facebook. Who is she? I just feel the presence of God so strong. That's what he was saying. He's a pastor of the church too. One of the pastors. When you carry the presence of God, like look at what happened. Once you enter, the atmosphere changes. And when you see people that don't carry that presence, there's a struggle. You guys in struggle. Look at you. Praying. We didn't even bring cloth. Can somebody go to the room and get the cloth? Oh, you got it? We didn't know that some people will be falling today. But the presence of God is so strong. And this morning I woke up, some people were sending me pictures. Princess Zetubi, I don't know if she's watching. She sent me a picture on WhatsApp. She said that this one that I was sitting, this is, you guys know when I was sitting in the white with my hand, you know how I do my thing. She said, this is heavenly. Everything you do is so significant. This is Jesus right here, my God. And then Mona sent me that same picture. I didn't know it was many said that loaded on her page. Mona sent me that same picture. She said, good morning, woman of God. Look what many said posted. And the caption, like Jesus teaching. And the very way he sat and raised his hand. So they had to go Google pictures of when Jesus sat down. Of course, we know that this is a picture, but... Most of the time, people have been, been inspired to, by God to draw these things. The way he sat, the way he did. <laughs> and somebody and I said, hmm. He said, what kind of God? Your God said. And everything about the way you love God reminds me about Jesus. Sometimes when I look at you, I wonder, I hope Jesus didn't come in a different form. <laughs> I started to laugh. <laughs> I said, are you serious? The same thing Jesus Christ told that lady in that scripture I just read. He says, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee. Let me read it in NLT. Jesus replied, if you, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to. Wait, let me start from up so that you guys can understand. I'm going to read from, I'm going to read the NLT translation. I've used this particular phrase, if only you know who you are speaking to, to so many people that I try to work with. I'm not, of course I'm not Jesus. Nobody should say they are Jesus, but Jesus lives inside of me. Jesus is with me. So I am like, he's using me to do the work. Basically, when you see me or when I see you, I should be able to see Jesus in you. That's why we are believers. Because we're imitators of Christ, right? We're trying to imitate Christ. We're trying to be like Him. Exactly. 
So it's okay for someone to say, I see Jesus when I see you. Because that's what we really need. <laughs> or you want them to say, I see devil when I see you. That's what you need to run on. I always tell people, if only you know, like when I went to New York with my cousin last year, he had a, small, a, a program, Pastor Isaac, I was the second. At the airport, when me and him were coming, there were other taxi guys, but they were looking for the top client, like me, I'm so casual, you know, I wear flip-flop in the airport. They were rushing after people, taxi drivers, rushing after people that they will get their luggage. I used to be a waitress, so I know. There are some people that will sit on my table, I'll say, oh, this is not gonna tip me. You know what I mean? Some people, I said, oh no, this one looks like she'll eat too much, she won't run me around, she won't tip. And then the number, I said, ah, this couple, they look like rich people. Do you know sometimes those people that I think, they did me one dollar. The people that I rejected, the people that took them, will say, oh my gosh, she gave me $40. If you're a waitress or waiter, you know, I was a waitress for five years, so I know what I'm saying. I used to judge. Clarice, you can come sit in the front here, sweetie. My darling Clarice. Come on, give Clarice a round of applause. She brought down the presence of God yesterday. They're going to sing today. I hope you're ready. You guys like her singing yesterday, right? I went back, I watched it before I slept. I felt chills on my body. In fact, it was more powerful on the video. People were just saying, wow. My God. I remember the first day she saw me in Maryland. I just came to preach at my bishop's program. At the end, my bishop had a line of people waiting. I and mean, me, I had a line of people because she'd been watching me on Facebook before she came. She said, woman of God, please, I want to speak in tongues. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, are you ready now? She said, yes. I said, okay, me That was it. It was powerful though. Were you able to drive home that day? She spoke in tongues all the way home. And I'm telling you, this was a few months ago. Like seven months or eight months or something. It's not too long. October or last year or something. October. I just, I just visited. So whenever she's singing, I keep remembering that day. Of how somebody's life can change once they receive the anointing. Do you understand what I mean? The anointing makes a difference. You don't struggle with it. Just open your mouth. He's the one that makes you get chills on your body. So like I was saying, so the taxi driver, they were going for the big shots. The, me, I look like one casual lady with this flip-flop. The taxi driver that picked us was a, a black old man. And this man was complaining from when he picked us up. Because we look, me and my cousin, I guess we look like some broke people. I don't know, but he was treating us like... I don't even know what, let me just manage these people. You know, like management customer. I kept quiet. So he paid in New York. I don't know if you guys know the way. They pay for like a ticket for parking or something. And they said it was $20 because he hasn't had any customer for a while. That day. So he kept saying, uh, well, if you need an, a, a, a hotel near the airport, it's um, here. Yeah. But I, we hadn't booked hotel, so we, anyone we entered, it was full. I said, can you take us around the hotels? He said, well, from the airport to the hotel is $15 or $25, but if I have to take you around, you're all gonna, you're all gonna pay some money. You're all gonna pay some money. You're all gonna pay. He was complaining about money. We entered, I said, no problem. Take us. We went to like four or five hotels in New York. By the airport, they were all sold out. This was night time, they were booked. So me, I was getting irritated while he was doing the money part. And normally in Houston, my cab ride from airport to my house is like $115. So when this guy was crying about $15, $25, I'm like... And I asked him, I said, if only you know who you have in the car, you will not be complaining. That scripture came to me. It comes to me so many times when I'm trying to work with people and they're giving me so much attitude. I'm like, Jesus felt this. That woman was trying to be stingy with water. He asked for water to drink. She was trying to be stingy and he said, <laughs> if only you know who is asking for water, you will be the one asking me for living water. The man, I said, okay, so how much would you take for taking me all over? He said, 45. I smiled. 
I said, okay. I had in mind to give that guy $100 from the airport. Even if he hadn't taken me to everywhere. I like to help people. See, I, I, I respect people's business. You understand what I mean? When I heard that at that gate he had paid $25 for parking. And they, I'm like, if he pays $25 for parking and he's only charging me $25 or $15 for dropping me by the airport. Because the airport and the hotels, they are very close. That means he's losing money. I was just calculating in my head. I was going to make him happy. But the way he was complaining. Like, like we are broke. Like we don't deserve good treatment. No, don't put any seat on this. Okay, that is, you can put one row. Are you sure it will not be too tight? Okay. So I said, okay, just 45. I said, okay, no problem. Take us. He still was complaining. Well, we now got to the hotel. I said, here, I gave him $100. I said, keep the change. He said, oh man, you good, you good people. You are good people. I knew you were good people. Hey, he said, you good people. I always knew that, said that in my spirit. Who's spirit? You had no spirit. You good people. He said, what, what man? You want me to pick you again tomorrow? I laughed. But this is exactly how it is with Jesus. When we come to him, we underestimate what we can get. If we start pushing what we want in front, like, I want money, I want this. If only you know what he can give you. I want 1,000 now. If only you know that he can give you 1 million. Like if you know what he has in mind for you to give you, you will not even open your mouth to ask for 1,000. You will say, Jesus, just surprise me. It's true. When somebody wants to help you, they, might, they probably have something bigger in mind. And you, you will come with an attitude and you will ruin it because you're small-minded. That person is, 1,000 is like only, <laughs> I was planning to give you 10,000. That's how it is with God. People underestimate God. This is a typical example. I don't remember these things. Holy Spirit always give me things to remember. So the guy said, you guys want to eat? I can take you to a restaurant. This was like around 10. The guy became our friend. Me, I was just calm. Quite frankly, I just, I just, I'm just, it's not even me doing these things. There's just something in me that treats people good. You understand what I mean? It's, it's, and with money, I'm not really so attached to it because if you hold on tight to money, you will lose it. But if you're freely given, freely, you, you'll be getting more. I'm not kidding. Try what I just told you. It's not because, me, if you notice, I don't want your money. Be a giver and you will never lack. Anybody here that wants to start trying it from today, next time I see you, you will tell me, woman of God, my God, my life has changed since I started giving. Even if God does not remember you, the people you give, they will go on their knees and pray for you. You will not know how many people, let's say you've touched the life of 30 people this month. Even if 30 don't pray, at least 15 would take it upon themselves. Don't, you don't know, maybe that money you give them, it saved their daughter's life from dying and maybe they needed to buy medicine. You think she will forget that her daughter she will not, anytime she's praying, even the daughter too will pray for you. And God will keep seeing prayers coming up for you. Or sometimes they will, this is what God showed me once. There was one time I helped so many people. I'm always helping people, by the way. Not, it's because I'm a teacher, I have to talk about these things. So that my students can learn. It's not to brag. We have to talk about what we do, right? One day God was saying to me, he said, Whenever you help people, sometimes they come and tell me thank you. And I'm wondering, why is she thanking me? And I'm like, oh, my daughter Belema gave her something. Oh, Belema, I love my daughter. Another one, what's that one? Why is that one celebrating? Belema, Belema again. Oh, Belema, Belema again. Oh, are you seeing this? In, in a day, 20 people say, Belema. 
Angels, make sure Belema is okay. Do you picture this? He's getting so much good reports for you. It's just like when he keeps getting bad reports for you. you you're in trouble. Don't do that. Even with the bad reports, God is not a wicked God. He will still try to talk to the person. You, you see witches and wizards? God doesn't hate them. He hates that demon controlling them. You, you are praying for the witch to die. Before they finally die, God has made so much effort to make them repent. Even in their dream, he showed them dreams. Sometimes they even hear his voice clearly because those people that are highly spiritual, like they have spiritual eyes, those evil people, they see angels too. Like if a witch enters here, she can see the angels here. They travel in the spirit realm. They can come here and they can see the angels and they will leave if they are not comfortable. You understand? So they see and they also hear. They don't only hear the evil voices. They also hear the good one. So God makes so much effort, even with those wicked ones. Because he loves them. You as a woman now, let's say you have two children. You love them so much. You train them up and you send them on a journey to go do something for you. And while you send them, one of them is doing it. The other one along the way, you warn them about some evil in that place. The other one fell for the evil. Would you just abandon the other one because they fell? You carry them for nine months. Won't you make effort? If you even have to go there yourself. I like to break things down like this so you can understand. That's why God's love is unconditional. God is love. You, you are hating that person. <laughs> that person you are hating, God doesn't hate them. <laughs> God loves them so much. If they repent now, they will still be filled with the Holy Ghost. And God might still be able to use them mightily. God even likes to use all these voodoo priests because initially they are supposed to be pastors. But the devil got to them first. So they are pastors for the devil. That's what they are doing, voodoo priests. Anybody you see that the devil has really used in a bad way was supposed to be really used in a good way. But the devil wanted to use them like that so that they will be not, they will not be good again for good, uh, for, for, for good use. But God, if that voodoo priest enter here, throw away all his shrine, repents fully, Holy Spirit enter him, he may start preaching right away. That's how our father is. So don't sit here and think that, oh, I have gone to astray. I can't come back. No. It doesn't matter what you've done. Mommy, come and sit in the front. It doesn't matter what you've done. God is always willing. His hands are always open. Even if you do that salvation prayer by yourself, in your house, alone, no pastor, you can still repent and get filled with the Holy Ghost by yourself, in your room, alone. It's not everybody that is privileged to have pastors or women of God on Facebook. Some people don't even have Facebook in their there are some countries that maybe they don't allow, I don't know, but maybe. Well, how do you think those people survive? There's some people that live in a country where they have a totally different religion. They don't have Christianity there. But they still feel with the Holy Ghost there. Do you see what I'm saying? No pastor preached to them. No pastor did deliverance. They sought God on their own. And he came to them. So that man said, I want to take you guys, you want to eat something? There are restaurants around there. I said, okay, let's go get out. Let's go drop our luggage. The taxi driver. So when we dropped our luggage, I said, is there an African restaurant? He took us to one African restaurant, but like they were doing a club or party there. So we left that one. And then he took us to like a Jamaican restaurant because I like their curry goat and rice. Yeah, that's Jamaican, right? Yo, yo, man. How does Pastor Isaac? Pastor Isaac, watch it. What, what a go on, man. Eh? 
right. Everything all right. That's right. <laughs> I like their accent so much. So he took us to a Jamaican restaurant and he parked because New York, I think they parked by the street or something. I said, come in with us. I want to buy you food. Me food? Nobody ever bought me food. I said, don't worry, come on. He said, okay. I said, man, you, you, I tell you, you good people. This guy, eh, he's so funny, the way he was talking. Pastor Eric and I were just laughing. <laughs> so, so we ordered. I said, what do you want? He ordered. I said, you just want one? He said, yeah. I can take more. I said, you see. The guy started being afraid. He's like, this is too nice. What is this? You know, the way you be so nice to somebody, and they're like, ma'am, okay, that's enough. That's okay. You don't have to do too much. That's enough. And then we finished. And then I paid him. I think I paid him again. He didn't want money for that little ride. But I still gave him. And then the next day we, we called him to take us to the venue for the program. And we gave him almost three or four times what he wanted. He said, my number, this is my number. Call me anytime. <laughs> Even at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. I'll be awake for you. <laughs> Pastor and I were just laughing. <laughs> but that's that's but when they saw us at the airport, they judged us. They didn't want to help us. It was only this black guy that grudgingly, because we look so casual. Like me, I don't. I like to be very free, like I remove my shoe. Once I reach the room, I remove the wig. My hair is short, like, like my son's hair, short. I f remove everything, I just want to be free, man, you know? So sometimes in the airport, you see me, but there are people that can tell when they see me. Like when I came from the airport, uh, when we were at the airport waiting for our luggage, me and my mother and my son, they were standing, and the, what they call that thing that put the luggage that's rolling on your way? Carousel. You know, I don't know how to speak English. Manage it like that. That thing that go around. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So while they were waiting for the thing, I don't like to stand too long. So I told mom, I said, mommy, let me go sit over there. So when I sat over there, I saw people passing. I was always, I always meditate when I'm by myself. I say, Father, these people, are they saved? You know, like, I always wonder, play, play, keep playing, so play that same one again. I saw people passing, everybody going about their business. And me, I just sat majestic. I just sat the way I sit. And I say, Father, when Jesus came, when he sat in a place by himself, did people recognize him? And then he gave me this scripture, John chapter 1. Because God speaks to me in scriptures a lot. Because, like I could be sitting here, you guys watch me, that's why you recognize me. But you could see me in the store, or I could sit in the plane with you, and maybe you've never watched my video. No, listen, I, I could be in the plane with you, sitting by, beside you. You will not know this anointed woman that hundreds of people watch. And maybe you are sick. I see you taking medicine. But you don't know who's sitting beside you. You don't know that this woman can just speak a word. Jesus is always beside us. Always. Everywhere we go. The next guy by you could be Jesus. That's why you have to treat people nice wherever you go. I'm telling you, you don't know. When people are talking to you, stop being mean because you might be talking to an angel and you don't even know. Just because you don't watch them on Facebook. But somebody else may see them and say, God bless you, sir. You know, like, like the DJ, after the program, he saw me differently. But he was talking to me. It was charging me. He said he's not charging a lot, but picture. He said I don't want to charge you too much, but he's still charging me. Video. Some people gave me quotes for video for almost ten thousand. I said let's use our phone by. Videos are expensive, especially when the hours are long, because they also have to do a lot of editing. 
it's long hours and they still have to go back and watch it all over and work on it. I respect people's job. It's not easy. But sometimes I believe that with ministry, people should be a little considerate. Because it's not every minister that has the kind of money that some ministers have to do stuff. That's why some ministers have not been able to do some programs because there's no money. But they have the anointing. There's so many anointed people that are broke. You didn't know that? There's so many anointed men of God that financially, so many churches have closed. The pastors are anointed because they couldn't pay the rent. It has nothing to do with, oh, you're anointed or not. Money is a part that the devil attacks in ministry. I mean, that's why I don't mess with my tithe. I pay my tithe. Because no matter how God has blessed me financially, no matter how much I give, if I don't keep to the rules, I'm still going to be broke. Do you understand? If I preach tithe but I don't tithe, God cannot help me. God will never go against his word for anyone. Not even for Jesus. If Jesus had come into this world and he had lived a sinful life, Jesus would have gone to hell. He would have just lost his only begotten son. God doesn't, he doesn't have familiar name. What's it called? Uh, what's that thing they say? Favoritism. Favoritism, none of that. Don't say, oh, I'm too much. I've, I've won billions of souls. Yeah, you can win a lot of souls and you may still not make heaven. Those souls will go to heaven, but you, if you're not careful, you may go to hell. And the devil will punish you a lot because you did a lot. You stole a lot of his people that he had put in jail. There is no favoritism. So we too, we are not above the law. If anything, we have to keep them, the commandments. Because people are watching us. You understand? We have to live by example. How can you be teaching stuff and you're not doing it? How can you say love people but you don't even love? And with love, you don't even have to say it. People can tell. You do it, you act it, you leave it. I can say, I love you, I love you, but I'm treating you a certain way. It's like what you're saying is different from what you're doing. So people are in this kind of relationship. The husband will say they love them, but they cheat on them like every day. And you're like, ah, your actions and your words, they don't match. And then some, some husbands, old fashioned, they, they never say I love you because they are old fashioned. They they're only so, don't you know I love you? If I didn't love you, will I marry you? Don't say it. You know these young people, they'll say, I love you, baby. Husbands, they don't do those things, baby things. They don't believe that you will know in your mind. There's a point that don't say I love you, but the way they treat you, it's enough to tell you that they love you. So it's not just preaching the word. It's doing it. Or it's not just, we have to do it to show it. So he gave me this scripture when I was asking when Jesus came because Jesus could have been the one sitting at that people on their phone, people doing their thing. He gave me this scripture. John chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. My mother and my soul were waiting for stuff and I was just reading it. He came unto his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of God the part that I really I mean when I'm hearing God and he's giving me all the scriptures I'm like it's so true he was in the world and the world was made by him it's like I created you don't you recognize me who are you again just like me now, God sent me here. And I expect people to believe in me. 
But instead they don't. I didn't create you guys. But I, I expected that if they see me, they will know that God sent. Even Jesus expect. I'm sure at some point Jesus will be disappointed, especially when those critics were always bothering him. When they will say, show us a sign, do this, it's like, ah, ah. after everything I've done, you still don't believe. You know what I mean? So what will I do now <laughs> that will make a difference? Some people, it's not a matter of, if, even if a dead person raised from here, they will say, yes, they planned with a dead person. <laughs> if that's why you, God doesn't do things for show off. If you go to a place because you want to show off power, you might be embarrassed. Nothing will work. He doesn't do things to sh show or impress anybody. He does things to draw people to him. Magicians, they do things for show up. They do things to impress you with their magic. But we, we don't do things like that. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. Because some of his own were already taken by somebody else. The devil. You understand? The devil has already taken a lot of his own. So he's going to try to win them over. That's what we're trying to do when we say, repent, repent. Somebody else has taken over you. Sin took over you. So you don't know God anymore. Or you never knew God. Sometimes some people never knew God because their family, they didn't they come from a Christian home. Maybe their, part, their dad was a voodoo priest. Or their mother was doing some voodoos. So they just grew up around that thing. And sometimes I don't blame them. That's why some people that come on my videos telling me they've been to so many voodoo places. If that's how they saw their parents doing. Voodoo, have our medicine. You can't get mad at those people. They don't know any better. Now you tell them the better way. You understand? If you grew up knowing that there's one voodoo doctor that if you have headache, you go to him. You do this, you go to him. When you reach 30 years old, you'll still be going to him. Right? And somebody is telling you, don't go to him. Why? That's all I've known. No, there's a better way. Who? Jesus. Who is Jesus? You have to teach them about Jesus. Don't say, ah, all you voodoo people. No wonder your life is like this. Voodoo. Stay away from me. Don't do that. They don't know any better. And besides, the way you even treat them will determine if they want your Jesus. Do you understand? Because you could be so mean to them. They're like, ah. If this is how you'll be with me, please. Let me just stay with the one I know. First impression, it really matters. Don't expect that everybody came from your background. Some people don't know. So some of the people that did not know Jesus, Jesus didn't blame them. That's why Jesus was so patient. Even with the Samaritan woman, by that well, he was patient with her. I'm sure they had more conversation than the Bible recorded because he was waiting for his disciples to get him food. They talked to a point that she got so comfortable she had to go run into the village to go call other people in fact she became an instant evangelist do you guys know that story? let me read it for you guys some of you don't know some of you don't read the bible how many of you read your bible daily? tell the truth, shame the devil I knew it hey. Hey. from today how many of you want to read your bible daily? Receive that anointing to read your Bible daily now in the name of Jesus. God speaks to us through the word. You want God to speak to you? Read your Bible. Once you open one scripture, I told you I was sitting in the airport and God was speaking to me with a scripture. He will tell you something but most likely it's in the Bible somewhere. What he's saying. Because this is his word. This is him talking. <laughs> you know? So if you're doing anything and you're not referring, or if what you're doing is not um, biblical, then most likely it's questionable. You understand? There's always someone in the scripture for that thing. If you can't find it, some people can even twist the Bible. But you will know. I want to read this um, John 4. 
Jesus. I'm going to start from chapter, um, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made, the, made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must need go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore, being weary with his journey, he was tired with his journey, sat, sat thus on the well. He sat by the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy him meat. Meat means food. So while he was waiting for his disciples, a woman came to the well. He said, give me a drink. Give me to drink. Like he's thirsty. Let me get water. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew, askest drink of me? You are a Jew. Why are you asking me of drink? Which I'm a woman of Samaria. Like the Jews don't like the Samaritans. Why are you asking me for water? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Like, I'm surprised you're even talking to me. Normally, we wouldn't speak to each other. Because you guys don't like us. We don't like you too. What does that tell you? With Jesus, there are no enemies. Right? We don't have enemies. We treat everyone with love. That's right. Jesus didn't care what Samaritans and Jews were doing. That's not his business. He just saw a human being and that's all. You understand? He didn't see your tribe or your color or your whatever. So Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest, if thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would give he would have given thee living water. Let me ask you guys a question. What if you were the woman? by the well. Come on, sweetie. And I, like, I am, I am the woman of God. I'm not Jesus. I'm the woman of God. And I come, I'm so tired. And you're pulling what I say. Please give me a drink. And you don't know me. And you know I'm, the way I'm dressed, I'm from, I'm a Jew. You act like that lady, right? But what if you know, you know me and I come as a woman of God that you love so much on Facebook. How would you respond when you see me? No, no, see. I would be so delighted, like I'll be willing to do whatever, yes. <laughs> if I asked for a drink from you, what would you do? I would definitely give it to you. I heard in my spirit that you even give me a bucket to drink the whole thing. She said, is it just a cup? Ha! <laughs> Take the whole bucket. <laughs> Buff it. <laughs> whatever. Woman of God asked me for water. Hey! Woman of God, is this enough? I can even give you food, say, woman of God. Cause is here now. Cause you say, woman of God, you want a bun or soup? I will cook for you now, not tomorrow. Right? Go ahead, sweetie. So the reaction will be different if she knew who he was. Right? But this time the reaction was not friendly. But Jesus was still calm. Because he has so much wisdom. This ministry work, we work with me, wisdom. The way that I bring this one to Christ may be different from the way I bring you. Like me, I was very stubborn. My bishop had to be very patient with me. Otherwise, I never would have repented. I'm not one of those people. See, I used to have a big crowd follow me when I was in the world. And the way you see picture of angel behind me, that's how demons were behind me then. Empowering me. Because for you to do show like that that so many people follow the devil is using you to do his work or something so he has his, his demons following you right the devil likes to imitate he likes to copy God whatever God does he wants to copy in an evil way you understand so if God gives you an angel he will give you a demon big too
But I've always known though, when I was in the war, even my mother is here, she'll tell you. I called myself princess. My name is not princess. My mother is here. The name they called me, my father called me Ayana Te. That's my first name. My middle name, Belema, means love. That was my grandmother that called me, right? My father's mom, right? Ayanate, my dad is the only one that calls me that name. It means I have gotten what I have been looking for, right? Because my parents, they were kind of wanting children. They were young, but all their friends were getting kids and they were one, they were young, go fornicating, doing things. <laughs> my mother is laughing. <laughs> Of course, you guys got me when you forgive me that. I mean, you forgot? You are forgiving that, it's okay. <laughs> I think they were young, but they were those people that they always had couples. They were very faithful to each other those days. I don't think there was so much promiscuity then. My mother said, oh really? I don't know, but most of them that grew up together ended up marrying themselves. That's why, like the people in that clique, they ended up marrying. So they went so many places like pastors. Even somebody even said they will do bait you or do something spiritual. And my mother said no. Right? Well, somebody was gonna take you to water or river or something. My mother said no. And then nobody tried to sleep with you, eh? One wanted to sleep with you. Mommy, come on, come and tell them. I'm a special child though. I came after all the runarounds. Okay, I went to meet a friend, actually a neighbor, who was also looking for, she was having a headache, and she was looking for help. So she took me to somebody who's supposedly a pastor. But it's the, anyway, I don't think it's really a church, but uh, he saw me in a room. Uh, he wanted to actually put something in, in me. And then he said, okay, I can sleep with you so that, you know, you have a, a child. I said, no, 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 no. My, my, my boyfriend can do that. <laughs> my boyfriend can do that. So he said, okay, we, we, he can take me to a river. I should buy certain things for sacrifice. And once I had that, I had um, something in my head. I said, what? So if you, if you took me to a river, that would mean when I have the child, I'll be going yearly to do sacrifice. I said, no, that's not for me. Yes, so that's where it stopped. Yes. Yeah, well, now that I'm here, we were fornicating. And there was nothing like promiscuity. Okay? Her dad was not a, he's not, he's not a good person in that area. That was then. You know, we were young player. and restless. Wait, wait, wait. Yes. My father was a player, just say it like that. Come on. That was before now. And hey, what happened, mommy? How did you finally get pregnant with me now? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going around now. Uh, you know, you know yourself as a woman. I started having my period at age 15. That was late too, in a way. But then even ha me having a boyfriend, I wasn't getting pregnant. I did not pray to get pregnant while I was in high school. But it's like I have this um, gift that when I speak something, it happens. Yes, I, sp I spoke. I said, I will not be pregnant while I'm in high school until when I'm ready. Even after speaking, I was trying to. So after high school, I really wanted to be pregnant. I was 20 or something, but... You know, it's the environment yes. and the, you know, family, lifestyle and stuff. So, um, I said, I, I was in church. We were in church, involved with the choir, okay? So that's where we met. But, you know, and when I was looking for help, I was looking in the churches, not in any spiritual somebody. Even in my church, we were like the original Pentecostal. Because we have the fasting and the vision, and the prophetic. Uh, you know how some fake, 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 fake. Prophecy. I was in a, we were having fasting, I think three days fasting. 
and one prophesied. He's not, that man was known as a fake prophet. He was one of our prophets in the church. He had even uh, prophesied to some of the arch, uh, archivists and archdeacons, and they told him, they mentioned his name, they said, please tell them not to show you any more from you. Whoever is showing you that, is telling you that, tell them to stop. So anyway, he said, you know, when you're young and they know that you're going with a man or something, and then you've not been pregnant, you know, they assume that you had already been pregnant and you've been through abortion and stuff. So this man got up, he said, ah, aren't you tired of, you know, uh, aborting, the aborting the babies? <laughs> now you're ready? I said, what? At that time, I did not say a word. It just, I said, hmm. well, I didn't say a word. But then I, the, there came a time when I went to our prayer session. And then another person said, after I bought in the babies, now you want one? That's when I spoke. I said, uh, I said, you get, uh, you do abortion after being pregnant. Now, I've never been pregnant. So, and I bought the baby. Then she said, oh, the pepper in your mouth. She has a sweet pepper in your So I said, yeah, well, it's common for us to, you know, for young people to say, I'm not ready. Let these babies wait until I'm ready. So if that is the case, then yeah. So after so, going through all that. After going through all that, uh, my mom at that time would be laughing at me. They told me that oh, I had a water spirit that he had locked up my children in a drum. <laughs> when I come home, my mom will say, "You're going to Puerto Rico. People are taking your money. You think uh, that?" <laughs> she was so serious. So that was the time I went to that guy, and then I said no. And I also went to our church uh, midwife or somebody who can cleanse you or something. So she did that. That's our way of doing it. Real Christian way of doing it. She did like, you know, some massaging and other things. So it came to a time I just let go of myself. I said, Lord, I have this breast. I go through my morning, uh, monthly circle. So they, these two things stand for something. That's a sign of motherhood. So I just said, let go. So after high school, I went to teacher's training college. I was busy with school, I was loving it. And then all of a sudden, she came. <laughs> wow, I said, okay, bye school. I said, bye bye school, let me go have my baby. <laughs> so you see, when you're looking for something and you don't get it, don't go faster than God. Just let everything go and keep yeah. praying. Yeah. When you least expect it, that's when you have it. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mommy. So basically, they went around to so many places trying to get me. Daddy is then, watching. I guess she kept praying, and God just gave her the best gift. And the moment I came, children just kept coming. She has four after me. It was so easy. But me, I, I think I, she said when she had me, my head was so big. My eye was big. My nose, I had big belly navel. Everything was big. And she said from Friday, she had labor, I mean. I didn't come out in Monday morning, I mean. Two for the three a.m. Monday morning. It was terrible. You see, of all the children, it is me that the head was the biggest. <laughs> I just destroy everything. You know, but and then all the kids they have, I'm so different from all of them. They're all very quiet. My parents are reserved people. My parents are so reserved that in fact, all this to me bringing my mother like my mother, she's sociable, but when I came to meet them in America, because they left, my father left in Nigeria when I was two years old, 1982, for school. And she joined in 1984 also for school and all this stuff. So I was just little when they left me there. I lived with her sister, but I was so popular everywhere I go. I was so smart. I was so different. I could sing. Not like this beautiful lady. Oh. My dear, you all pass me. Let me just tell you the truth now before I go and mess up. But any church I entered, they, I would be in the congregation. They were looking. I just had this star. I couldn't hide. 
Then in my school in village, I was the only one that had the best result in junior work. They had to give me scholarship. Like I was just, I wasn't trying. I went to a new school. I was a social prefect. I was acting. I was singing. I was, I could rap. Hey. I was rapping like this. So now that we got a little kind of dough, sing the bowl, sing the key, the own I was doing everything. I was so popular. I, I could, I was a newscaster, the best newscaster. I was a singer. I was an actress. I was a debater. Good day, Mr. Moderator, panel of judges, acro timekeeper, co debaters. I'm here to. I, I was good. I was just good. Anywhere I go. So I always knew that there was something about me. My mother is here, so she will tell you if I'm saying something else. Everything I tell you is the truth. Me, I don't have to lie because I want to be able to tell the story again later. Let it sound the same. <laughs> I don't want it to be messed up. The second time I say it, I will say she instead of he. You know? One day, I was like, when I came to America, I said, I'm a princess. I've always known I'm a princess. Actually, in Nigeria, I think I started calling myself princess. Because my parents chose the name they wanted. I want a princess. So when I started promoting a lot in Houston, I now, my name is Belema, the middle name is what I go by. But in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, where I'm from, a lot of people go by that name. Even men, women, it means love. And honestly, that name followed me everywhere I went. There was so much love. And I also had love. I don't know how to hate people. And I'm very blunt. I don't know how to. If, if you wear something and it look funny on you, if all your friends say you look good, until I tell you you look funny, my stomach will be hurting me. I will say, see, don't be offended, but this is look funny. It's like, I had to tell the truth. Some people get offended, but later they will appreciate you. You know, sometimes it's offensive, but it's better than for them to go and look funny in public, right? It's better. But some friends, they love you, but they don't know how to tell you in a way that you will not be offended. So they will just leave it like that. But that's not a good way. It's always good to tell the truth. Because they get upset even more later when they find out that you let them go like this. You know what I mean? But either way, that's the kind of person I was. I'm still very outspoken till today. It's just me. So I called myself Princess and then Belema, I was like, let me use a nickname, Belenzi. <laughs> so I started calling people as in the party scene, they don't even know my name as Belema. They know me as Princess Belenzi. It was one day that Facebook made me change. They wanted my ID. They said they want me to use my real name. So I had to put, remove Princess Belemzi as my main, if not when I had my Facebook page, it was Princess Belemzi. But now you see Belema and Beni. I really did not like that. I love my name, but I call myself Princess. But then whenever I see myself, I see a crowd in front of me. But I don't know what I'm doing in front of them. But I've always seen a crowd. So I don't know if it's the party, because in Nigeria I used to be in the choir in all the churches. I was singing and things were happening. But I was not born again. I was doing things. So when I came to America in 2000, we finally, my, parent, my father came to take me and my brother. When we came, my parents, they live a quiet life. And me, I'm not a quiet person. I said I used to do everything. Every time I walk around, I have a crowd following me behind. I, I don't join a group and become the follower. I'm always the leader. If I enter your group, all of you become follower, I become leader. No, I'm telling you in school, people will be begging me, come and join the group. I say, no, you guys are already formed. Let me form my own and be my own. I just have this leadership thing in me. You know, it, 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 I, didn't, I didn't do it, it just happened. So when I came to America now, my parents, my mother came to pick me at the airport. I looked so skinny, I was skinnier than Cornelia. Cornelia, stand up. Mommy, was I skinnier than her, was I like that? I was skinnier than her when I came in 2000. My mother started to cry in the airport. You are not eating. <laughs> Look at what she has done to me now with food. <laughs> You say you're not eating. 
Lelema, what is this? I said, mommy, everybody in Nigeria is this skinny. All my friends are this skinny. When we grew up, we were all very skinny. I don't think we even worried about losing weight. We were even worried about we want to gain weight. So my mother saw me. But I stayed in the house. I enjoyed myself. I now notice that they don't really go out. They don't even open the door or the window for breeze to come in. In Africa, isn't that what we do? You open your window now, fresh air. In fact, Africa, every time someone is knocking at our door, on our day house, how now? You get salt, you get sugar. They hear that always, there's always something. Or the neighbor will loud their music. Nigeria, you know, they don't care if you like the noise or not. When they are playing Agatha Moses, Chine, eh, what that song? Chine, Kika, ah, or whatever song. You will be, they are playing it there. DJ is in his own house. You are dancing from your own house. That's how loud it is. But here, you don't even know who your neighbor is. Everybody mind their business. I was, I was getting sick and tired of this. I said, Mommy, Daddy, I need to come out. You guys don't go out. They said, No, America is not like that too. I said, Hey, even store. We had to buy clothes to wear. Because I used to wear tight, shapey things, you know, then I had good figure now. I said, Mommy, take me. Because my mother said, Don't worry about your clothes. Don't bring anything. They have everything in America. I used to sell clothes in Nigeria. I had clothes to fill up from here to here. Because I don't repeat clothes. I wear it. So people will buy it from my body because I will lie to them. I'll say, ah, my mother sent it from America. It's a lie. I went to bend down, select, to select the clothes. Eh? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>